So it's my great uh, privilege, really, to uh, introduce uh, Marta to give the uh, keynote for today. And obviously, uh, you know, Marta has been in the news and in the headlines recently, particularly through her work with Eden Marta. <laughs> That's kind of exploded onto the national consciousness uh, just in the last few weeks. But what most people don't realize uh, is that that has been bubbling away for years now. Uh, and Marama has been working on that since before we got into government uh, as an MP. So it's been uh, an issue that she has been tirelessly working away um, behind the scenes, trying to get to a mediated uh, outcome and a mediated solution so that we don't see the kind of conflict um, that was starting to show up. And it's actually incredibly um, heartening to see uh, that that work and, and that kind of mediated outcome is now looking like uh, it's got a real, a real hope of success. So um, that's what a lot of people are seeing about Mano. But I, I just wanted to spend a bit of time uh, talking about some of the things that you probably don't see. And there were some shots of MPs working away in select committees and so on there. And actually, a lot of, a lot of people don't see about Mano's work. Uh, is she's one of the most senior members of the Māori Affairs Select Committee. Um, she's brought uh, the Ikemato issue into that Select Committee, got an inquiry going there. Uh, she's got inquiries going into uh, the structural inequalities in the health system as affect Māori. Um, doing a huge amount of work on housing via the uh, Māori Affairs Select Committee. Um, and as, as the video pointed out, working at all levels of government to try and make sure that that agenda keeps pushing out and keeps pushing out. So there's the kind of the high profile stuff and the stuff that makes the news, but actually in a lot of ways the real difference is that really tireless work that happens behind the scene uh, that you don't often uh, get acknowledgement for, um, but you know, really makes a massive difference. So there's also the, the kind of uh, thing that you don't see about what kind of a person that she is. Again, there's the staunch advocate, the person who's out there on the front lines, getting these issues into the public consciousness. But what our staff see, and what our MPs see, is an incredibly warm human being, who makes sure everyone is taken care of, that we're fed, that we're watered. <laughs> she sets a terrible example when it comes to making sure that we all get enough sleep. <laughs> Our, our staff actually refer to her as Auntie Marama. And it's, there's a real tradition in Maridam, of course, of the staunch auntie. Uh, and I think that Marama epitomizes that incredibly well. And that's what you're going to see today. So, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and give a warm welcome to your favorite co leader and mine. <laughs> Without your support. And I cannot think of 
any place, I would rather be right now. The people power represented in this room inspire me. And actually, there have been huge and inspiring moments of people power happening all around the world in the last few weeks here in Aotearoa as well. And I'm feeling super energised by all of you in this room. I would like to thank all of you who have come here this weekend because of the shared commitment we have for our people and our planet. Yesterday, my co-leader James painted a vision of an Aotearoa that puts the climate and the well-being of our natural environment at the centre of everything we do. And we know that the well-being of our climate and our environment is inextricably linked to the well-being of people. Around the globe, we are hearing the call for a more just and sustainable world. We are seeing an increased understanding that the forces that have damaged our planet are the same forces that have concentrated wealth and power into the hands of a few, while many struggle to get by. We are seeing the people demanding strong action on climate change and inequality, realising that they are interdependent issues. And when it comes to inequality, one of the key areas to address is housing. We need to forge a whole new approach to housing. When it comes to the well-being of people, everyone needs a home. Today, I know, right? We <laughs> need a home. Today, I'm offering up a vision for housing that moves away from housing as a commodity and back to homes as a fundamental human right instead of a privilege. <laughs> and heat pumps so more people can afford to heat their homes. <laughs> people properties are warm and dry. 
We've built more state houses than any government since the freaking 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> because their homes are cold and damp. Mm. I've got a long speech to go and I didn't build in this many of those. Uh. <laughs> 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 creating affordable, energy-efficient homes and connected communities with low-efficient public transport solutions. We want to raise building standards for homes, and that's just the start. The problems here have been obvious for too long. I've said everyone needs a home. And everyone deserves a home where you don't have to worry month to month if you'll get moved on and be part of the community. A home where you have a clear path to ownership if you want it. We need to reclaim housing, homes, as a jolly public good, not just as a nesty. public infrastructure. In order to move away from that profit-driven approach and to redefine housing, we need a complete reset. We don't expect the market to provide public goods like health care, education and public transport. We are rightly proud of our commitment in New Zealand to public services. The Greens are clear that housing is a public good and needs the same treatment. Housing should be about meeting the needs of the many and not generating wealth for the lucky few. Well I'll, I'll let you flag on that one. <laughs> this is simply the right thing to do. In order to make homes once again a public good and not just a commodity, we need to intervene in the market. We know we need to tackle the housing crisis at the source, not just manage the results. We have been relying on the market for too long, a market which is not designed for people, but is designed for profit. A market will never prioritise social and environmental needs. It is naive and destructive to expect fairness for families in a country with growing wealth and inequality through a market approach. Our families and environment cannot sustain this market-based approach. It causes out-of-control price increases, squeezing already meagre family budgets. It results in speculators flipping properties, taking home ownership further out of reach, and it encourages shocking behaviour, like real estate agencies punching down against tenants on social media. Mm. Not only does the market encourage this behaviour, it rewards it. Mm. The government currently spends a billion dollars a year on the accommodation supplement, subsidising private landlords, rewarding them with more money for a broken system doesn't fix the problem, it protects it. Yep. <laughs> Although the accommodation supplement is there to help, it is only an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. It demonstrates how much of a failure our rental market is that we subsidise private landlords to the tune of a billion dollars. 
This money could be spent enabling not-for-profit organisations to provide a public good instead. When parents and families are unable to house their children in warm, dry and safe homes, the failure is not just a market failure. It is a government, community and moral failure. is too fundamental to the health and well-being of people, families and communities for us to be timid. We need to be brave. The Welfare Expert Advisory Group told the government that we cannot fix poverty unless we fix housing as well. It's been like this for so long, it's almost impossible to imagine something different. But let's try anyway. I imagine homes built for our communities, our country, our needs. I imagine happy families secure in their tenancies and their communities. I imagine every single person in Aotearoa in a warm, affordable, suitable home. For the first time in my life, the government is starting to move in the right direction. The Greens want more than a move. We need a complete about to. We know that a different world is possible and we will take you there. Today, we have policy solutions to signal a better approach to housing. The Green Party is focusing on helping people who are renting <coughs> to be secure and in healthy homes. What I want to focus on today is our rent to own policy. Rent to own is a simple solution that has been tried and tested overseas and on a small scale here in New Zealand by community providers such as the Housing Foundation and Habitat for Humanity. Ben, are you in here? Kilda. Kilda <laughs> Ben from Habitat for Humanity. We know that rent to own, done at scale, can be a game changer for our fellow one. And we are ready to negotiate our rent to own policy as part of the Kiwi Bill reset. Here's how it will work though. The government will build a home, or will work in partnership with an iwi, charity, or community housing provider. Once built, a family moves in, knowing that one day, the house will be their home. For the first few years, the household pays rent, but unlike a private rental, part of their payment will go towards building equity in the home. After a few years, combining this rental equity with their Kiwi saver, they will have built up sufficient deposit to buy the home for themselves and can continue paying off a mortgage rather than just paying rent. This means... <laughs> because you know, this means that the household will take a step from renting into home ownership supported by the government. This is not merely a short-term patch. This is a long-term transformation. Rent to Own is an exciting solution that can offer a pathway to those locked out of home ownership who are able to pay rent, but not enough to save for a deposit. It would ensure stability for more households. It would allow people to put down those roofs knowing that they are not going to get kicked out when the landlord decides to sell. I am leading Green Party policy on this work right now to achieve our vision for iwi, community and government supported rent to own schemes. The Green Party's rent to own policy will support those who are currently locked out. It's not about deposit assistance to those who are almost there already. It's about helping those who were never going to get there. 
The upcoming Kiwi Build Reset is an opportunity to solve the cause of the problem, not just alleviate the symptoms. Instead, we need to focus our support on the people who have not been able to achieve this living security due to student debt, high rents, low wages, high housing costs, and high costs of raising a family. Imagine this world. Imagine being a young parent, say, trying to find a place to live with your tamaniki, and instead of looking just at private rentals, you had the option to buy a home through a government-backed program designed for your needs. You could move in with the confidence that this home would one day be your own. In my view, this security and sense of belonging to your neighbourhood is the least we should expect. I will continue to work with government on our rent to own priority. Now, currently, nearly 40% of New Zealanders rent their homes, much higher percentage for Māori and Pacific peoples. Renting in itself needs to be a dignified option for people rather than a second-class way to live. <laughs> people just want to feel secure in their tenancy to live in a home that is affordable and healthy and suitable to their needs. That is why it's important to pair rent to own with rent reforms and other forms of home ownership. So, we need to radically lift our standards for rentals. First, I want to refer us again to better builds and healthier homes. The Greens want to see more well-designed, higher density apartments, townhouses and homes purpose-built to be long-term affordable rentals. The homes in the passive housing development I visited this week and I mentioned before will be tested for their ability to reach the ultimate goal in energy efficiency and reduce the need for artificial heating. They do this with things like triple glazed windows, airtight ceiling, and smart ventilation systems. Now, that's the ultimate sort of standard I would love to see rolled out across the nation. To lift standards and start to reach these energy efficient and healthier ideals, we need a warrant of fitness scheme for homes. the burden of raising safety issues to their landlord. We wouldn't allow people to lease you a dodgy rental car. Why do we allow people to lease you a dodgy home? Greens will keep insisting on an enforced warrant of fitness as a basic standard for our rental market. We also need to address rental security. This term, we are reforming the Residential Tenancies Act, and Greens want to see an end to no cause terminations. We should never allow for people to be arbitrarily given notice to move out of a rental property. Greens will continue to work with this long held policy position of ours. So alongside a rental warrant of fitness and ending no cause terminations, we also want to see better protection against runaway rent increases. There needs to be an agreement so tenants know how and when their rent will go up. People who rent need a transparent and fair formula to see how and why their rents will go up and this will remain a priority of our work to reform laws around renting. Mm -hmm. While we work 
We also recognise that individual houses on individual plots of land do not work for everyone and is not always the best way to use land. Collective models such as papakainga and co-housing need to be part of the solution. The local <laughs> that local Dunedin passive house development I mentioned is also a co-housing model. And it's a model that reminds me of living in a Malai community, a papakainga. Building in this way needs to be part of our approach to state housing and urban development. That site uh, here in Dunedin features large shared green areas, shared inside gathering areas, and diverse types of homes, ranging from five bedroom multi-level units to one bedroom flats. This papakainga type passive house living would allow for better human connections and community, easier intergenerational exchange, alleviate loneliness, and promote more sustainable and affordable living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Greens want to see support for this approach to the house building sector to scale up, to be dominating the way we build communities. This is an essential part of setting Aotearoa on a path to net zero carbon. On this, we will look to support iwi, kapu, local government and non-profit community housing providers. <laughs> Renting from state, iwi, community and local government providers needs to become a normal part of a balanced housing market. The biggest state house building program in decades needs to get way bigger. Yeah. We've got to aim for the wait list to be at zero. Yeah. We need to build more and build better. And I know that new state housing must be fully accessible as the default minimum. waiting lists for wheelchair accessible state houses. As a default, state houses should be designed with the expertise from the disability community with inclusive planning at the outset and at the centre of our buildings. The Greens will continue to champion this approach. So the last important piece of our puzzle is tackling homelessness. There is no excuse in this comparatively wealthy country of ours for anyone to be living without a home. Greens remain committed to ending homelessness, not just addressing it, and advocating for the support to local grassroots groups to lead this work as part of the government's Housing First program. I also support a Tamata Whenua lead response to ending homelessness. <laughs> Given that it is Māori who are disproportionately living rough, the work to support people into housing must take its guidance from iwi and hapu. I stand with this call that has come from people like Ali Hamlin Painer after she announced that Kohungunu Social Services would be supported to lead work to end homelessness in their region. The Greens are clear that government needs to give over resources and power to the best placed local organisations at a level to do this mahi with their own people. <laughs> Fano, governments have always had the power and the resource to interrupt 
the housing market that is not delivering for our people and our planet. We think it's well past time to be very honest and very brave and use the levers to return housing as a core public good and a fundamental human right. When we are facing entrenched inequality and poverty, an unstable climate, and rapid loss of species and ecosystems, we know that transformative economic, social, and environmental change has never been more important. The Greens have a plan to fix housing in Aotearoa. Rent to Low is part of our confidence and supply agreement. It is a priority for us, and we will achieve it this term. But this is just part of what needs to be done. We will be focused on building more public houses that meet the needs of everyone. We are reforming our renting laws to make sure renting is a healthy, secure, long-term option for those who don't want to buy. And we are focused on building communities for everyone, homes that are good for our planet. I am proud of what our team and I have been able to achieve in governance so far. And I thank you for listening to what else we want to do. Kia ora, 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 Kia 